Hey, it's JC1424 once again with another album review, and today we're going to be talking about the new album from Papa Roach titled Ego Trip, released on April 8th, 2022. The first time I ever heard of this band was definitely from this game right here. They had two songs in this game's soundtrack. One was just them, and another they did with the Black Eyed Peas. But aside from that, you know, they always had The Last Resort on the radio, and then other singles I mildly kept up with them through the years. I think their last album was not received very well, but the one before that, which might have been like 2015 or 2016, yeah, I think that one definitely took off. I heard um, the song Help on the radio all the time, and heck, I even went looking for it in some cases. I think they also did a song with In This Moment, and that one really rocked, too. Aside from that, um, not much else for me to talk about with my experiences with Papa Roach, but track one is Kill the Noise. And this was one of my favorite songs of 2021. So it's great that my favorite song on the album starts it off. It's got them rock festival vibes, and it definitely sounds like something from as early as 2015. The riff and chords are electric, and the breakdown is just completely visceral. It has some cool similarities to Given Up by Linkin Park, in my opinion, both theme-wise and some of the elements they have mixed in. Take to the static in my mind. Track two is Stand Up, and I wouldn't call this a bad song, just wacky, I guess. The verses throw off the album's pacing by having this nutty mood and a spunky carryout. It's supposed to be about getting mentally in the right place to be rebellious within society. You can even hear it, you can feel it within that chorus, but I just wouldn't say it comes together smoothly up until that point. Sweat, sweat. The third song on this album is Swerve, featuring Fever333 and Suko? Sueko? I don't know, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it just seems like they went out of their way to make the worst sounds possible. It's like a dog shit combo of Thrift Shop, Corpse Husband, and Takashi69. I wouldn't say I agree with this song's style until the outro begins, because by that point, it's simple enough that I can pick out all the different things that they're going for, at the very least. But it's just blatant, incoherent noise up until then. And it's a musical embodiment of the whimsical album cover. So there's that. Track four is Bloodline. As much as I prefer the instrumentation here over the last two songs, it's way less coherent because it has a volume dynamic that struggles to make sense beginning to end. The lyrical material is good, but it's just carried out obnoxiously with these wanky 90s sound effects. So it's extremely industrial, and I get that slight Rob Zombie or Power Man 5000 vibe at the very least. Okay, the fifth song on this album is Liar, and it's written about being haunted by your own regrets and everything misleading you might have done up until this point. Now, Kayla's been in my life a very, very long time. I know that. But this just oozes Panic at the Disco and or Descendants, sound-wise. It does continue using an assortment of party music elements, but the bounce of the tempo is simple, and the hook is just glamorous. There's a good book in the bad book. Track 6 is Ego Trip, and of course it's the title track, and it has a dynamic that works really well, in my opinion. The bass guitar lick is nice, and I admire that straight-up rumble that it's got pre-chorus, and the chords sit beneath this really fine melody. You can tell the point here is that it takes effort to not shoot yourself in the foot with your own really high self-esteem or whatever. The lyrics are good wordplay, and a lot of the sounds on this album, just like in this case, are used as imagery. Supply, cause when I get high, I'm on an ego trip. I'm on an ego trip. 
Track seven is Unglued, and good God, this song is just totally stellar, dog. It resonates in such glorious fashion. It's like a new metal waltz, and then the post-chorus comes in and just slaps. You've got a unique harp to lead in everything, and then this, this sick, distorted, and then panned guitar during the bridge. Oh, I'm just infatuated with it. And it has this theme that we lie to ourselves and that inherently doesn't hold a bond together well. The eighth song on this album is Dying to Believe, and it was another one of the many singles that this album spawned over several months. And the premise is wanting to find faith that there can be more unity in humanity. The strongest aspects here are definitely the vocal melody. And then there's another radical bridge with the most fierce screams on the album. And they seem to have found neat ways to decorate the song with effects, but still leave it fairly organic. Dead Row! You say your hope is cold, but I say Track 9 is Killing Time. And it's very balanced in comparison to the, the whack job that Falling in Reverse tried. This does sound like a, a modern day hybrid theory thing, sound wise, in my opinion. Everything starts so simple and then just gets loaded with cool percussion, bass, and, and keyboard shit. All the while, it's circling around the concept of being almost at peace, but just never quite there. I've been killing my time, put me in a grave, bury me alive. I don't want to lay down, no more won't lie, no more won't lie. It's the black of the The one acoustic ballad on the album is track 10, Leave a Light On. And it reminds me of Far From Heaven, from the most recent Evanescence album a while back. Except with a much better mix, obviously. Although the writing loses me, being cliche here and there, the orchestration is spot on, and the vocals are perfectly crisp. Miles apart within my reach. It's not like me to worry. Song number 11 is Always Wandering, and it's loosely based on a tale of two people just driving around in random directions, never fully coming to a conclusion. But I think it's also an analogy for two people like that always avoid like a very important topic that they should talk about in their relationship. I feel this in the lyrics, but I think it should have a music video to put it together better. But this is not single material, so I don't know. But it sounds like both Christian Rock and Blink-182 at the same time. But it, it's a fine song. Um, if those killer chords never came in, then I'd have lost all hope for this one. But then, in the second verse, the bass gets all boopy. And I guess I like it. Another remission. And now I'm running from a collision. So far away from the breakthrough. Track 12 is No Apologies, and I'm not sure why, but the past couple of songs have felt pop punkish. but maybe that's just me, but this one's just wholesome to sum it up. It's about being with someone who's been through a lot, and it was already a solid jam, and then they put that flanger on the guitar in the bridge, and it got me all dazed, oh my goodness, and the guitar tone in general is delicious on this song, like Chevelle, and the drums kick ass on this one too, that's something I haven't talked about enough in this video. Can turn it all around if you don't turn your back on me. We can turn it all around. <laughs> Cut the line is another one of the singles, and it's track 13 on this album. A fantastic performance from the whole band. The movements here are just immaculate, and we've only gotten aggression like this in a handful of tracks, to be honest. But the melody gets a tad redundant here, if you ask me. And this is either a song about fish. Or a song about a messy headspace? Maybe both? I don't know, I give up. I can, can cut the line. Cut the line. And the final song on this album is track 14, I Surrender. And I swear, 
this is just a star set song without the sci-fi gimmick you could fool robbie for maybe like 30 seconds or a minute i don't know <laughs> i'm just kidding it's a great ending to the album with the sickly dirty riffing and the voice that is used here is just gorgeous it's powerful and has that slight rasp in there if you know what i'm saying and the pre-chorus is kind of sexy not gonna lie i, I just saying <laughs> And it is a relaxing closure to the song and the album in general with the outro that this one has. But my final score for the new album by Papa Roach titled Ego Trip is an 88%, which is a, a solid B. And it's just strange because this could totally be like an A or maybe even an A plus if this massive hole at the beginning of the album wasn't there. Or you got like track two and three and four and they're like, using these wacky elements, not at all in moderation, and I just doesn't vibe with me very well. So I got to sit through that for like 10 minutes, maybe 15, I don't know how long those three songs were all together. And then finally, all of a sudden, I'm getting beginning to the end of the album. It's just like 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. I mean, I'm just having a great experience because of the, the dynamics of the songs and how they're all about different things. They have different riffs, different chord progression, different bridges, and everything is done differently. Different kinds of distortion. I think every now and then things were used again, but, you know, you gotta have similarities whenever you're a band making the, the music. It's not two different bands. So, I mean, maybe they have similarities um, a lot with the way their songs sound in general from different albums on this one. But as far as this album in, in, as a whole, without those three songs, it would be this this perfect uh, mainstream rock album. And they keep new metal alive, that's for sure. And they aren't just doing the basic rap rock new metal thing. They, they are being innovative. It's just, it didn't work with those three songs I was talking about. But see you next time. That's that. And album review over.